Hey guys, Michael Bailey here. This is my first ever YouTube video for Cat5 Road Racing. This is my second ever uh, Cat5 Road Race. Um, if you don't know what Cat5 means, Category 5 is basically, it's uh, essentially the lowest category of bicycle racing. You have Category 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you have the pros, and then there's like different levels of pros. But for your first 10 races regardless of you know what your potential skill level might be um, and as we'll see in this video my skill level is pretty low so cat 5 is good for me but your first 10 10 races you have to be category 5 even if you are i guess like the mountain biking you know champion of of you know the country or something you're still if you want to do a road race you're going to be category 5. so you do 10 category 5 road races then you move up to category 4 um, and then category four, you have to earn your way out of. I, I don't know all the details yet, but you have to have you know a certain you know number of finishes at a certain you know at a certain you know top ten or whatever, however many times. It also depends on the size of the race and all that. Uh, but I figure I'll worry about that you know next year in two years. So this is my second race. Uh, I did not film my first race. I was I had a great time. I rode in the peloton basically the entire race. It was really flat. Um, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm a pretty decently sized guy I'm 185 pounds so sitting in the peloton and riding on the flats is pretty easy for a build like mine um, whereas this race there's a lot of flat and then some big uphills as you can see in the bottom right of my screen I have the elevation um, indicated which you won't see any of that information any of my Garmin data come up until um, after the neutral start is completed which so right now we're in what's called a neutral start so you can't see up ahead because of how thick the fog is, but there's actually a lead car that we're all riding behind. And what the lead car does once the race officially starts is they're supposed to honk their horn, then they basically accelerate off, and the race is a go. Uh, unfortunately, I never hear the horn honk. I don't know if they forgot or if the race was just stretched out enough in the neutral start that they didn't hear the horn. I, I don't know. I don't think they honked it. I, I feel like I probably would have heard the horn honk. Anyway, so right now I know we're still in the neutral star. We're, we're riding pretty easy. You can't see my GoPro data, but um, you know, I'm outputting very few watts at this point. Uh, just kind of comfortably rolling along. I'm not riding anybody's wheel too aggressively. Just you're kind of spinning my legs. Um, and actually, right, right now, if you look up ahead to the left, um, the guy in blue, that is Tim Kelly, uh, one of my teammates from the team, from the club. Uh, I haven't known him for very long. He's a super strong rider. I kind of kind of had this idea in my head that uh, I would just kind of hang out behind Tim. Uh, he's really strong. I figure if I could hang on Tim, I'll be okay. But uh, as we'll see shortly, I, I just I make some mistakes really early. I don't take the first part of the race seriously, uh, <laughs> and all that's coming up. You'll you'll see all that shortly. Um, so I thought I'd tell you just a little bit just a little bit more about me so this is uh, like i said i'm category five which is um i'm you know i'm a brand new racer this is my first year racing i just joined a bicycle club this last year um union Bay cycling based out of seattle washington it's been better than you know i really i kind of ever expected i'm super supportive all skill levels of riders um, I've, I've learned an incredible amount riding with these guys um you know, how to ride in a group, building confidence, you know, you know what bike racing is all about, just, just all these little details, all these things that, like, I just I wouldn't have been able to learn on my own. Um, and so if, if you're not in a bicycle club, if you've never done anything like that, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's just, It's been fantastic. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm almost a little embarrassed that I'm, I'm talking up the, the bicycle club, um, you know, going into the 
how badly I'm going to race this first like five minutes, but uh, you know that that's on me. That's just you know kind of an experience. So pretty soon I think I'm about I'm going to turn on my Garmin and you'll start to get my data. You'll see that I'm I'm you know I'm not stressed out. My heart rate's pretty low. Um, you know right here like I could easily pedal up and get on somebody's wheel, but I'm just I mean I'm barely even pedaling. I'm just I'm just descending. I'm feeling good. Um, Yes, anyways, I'm 37 years old, um, first year of bike racing. I've been biking for a couple of years, but mostly just commuting. I did some bike touring. Um, so last summer, I rode from Seattle, Washington down to San Francisco on the Oregon Coast Highway, uh, which was a blast. Oh, here's my Garmin data, so now it's up. So you can see we're rolling downhill. I'm doing, you know, low 200 watts, which for me is, is you know, n n like near effortless. I'm just kind of basically just kind of putzing along here. But you can see the speed's still pretty high. I mean, it's it's a it's a slide downhill. We're going about thirty miles an hour, um, and you know, watching this video now, I mean, at this point, I should have said, okay, you know, let, let's kind of get in this thing. You know, you know, I'm I'm starting to you know my watts are going up a little bit, but I'm still not worried about it. I mean, my heart rate's one sixty. Um, I should have been working up. Like this would have been a good opportunity to kind of like work up into the group a little bit and. In hindsight, watching this now, I'm, I'm kind of scratching my head and wondering what the heck I was doing. Um, you know, my wattage is still pretty, pretty relaxed. You know, here I'm, I'm putting a little kick in, but uh, yeah, I think here I noticed this guy on the right who just went off the screen. Um, people are starting to actually struggle a little bit, so, um, so I'm starting to put in a little bit more efforts, uh, but I can't see with the fog what the race looks like i mean my feeling is at 39 miles an hour 40 miles an hour that that we're okay okay so this spot right here i want you to watch this guy up here on the left in the green he has a white bike watch what happens here to his bike he comes about as close to crashing as i've ever seen i don't know what happened to his bike i ended up actually communicating with him afterwards via email um he asked for a copy of the video i sent it to him so that he could send it to his you know the bike manufacturer and try to figure it out uh, but i hit my brakes when he did that and you can see right now basically this guy in front of me i was only looking at him and i didn't realize how big of a gap had formed between him and the rest of the group and so now here i am at 700 watts going downhill this is when i first start to realize that I'm in a little bit of trouble. So I'm hammering down the hill. My heart rate's up to 175, which for me is is pretty high. Um, I'm one of those people that for some reason I just have a hard time getting my heart rate, heart rate up very high. Uh, by the time I hit like mid 170s, high 170s, I'm, I'm feeling it. So I'm still hammering. I'm still pushing. I mean, this is a pretty big dig for me. Um, you know, 450 watts is uh you know that's hard for me for any duration i mean i'm i'm you know still in my first year of racing so this guy who was on my wheel um i try to jump on his but as you can see my heart rate's high 170s i'm still at 450 watts i mean I'm well 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 over my ftp and so i lose his wheel um i see this guy he's struggling i'm pretty sure this is a guy named uh even who i just passed in the green jersey who I end up riding with the whole rest of the race. So he jumps on my wheel, um, which we'll see in a little bit. Um, he'll come around me. But right now I'm hurting. I'm, I'm closing on 180. I'm still, you know, high 300s, 400 watts. I mean, we're on we're on the flat. And I'm doing 28 miles an hour, which, um, you know, for me is is pretty pretty high end. I mean, this is not something I can sustain. I'm in panic mode right now. I can't even see where the race is. It's so foggy. I can see the one guy in front of me, and I'm just, I'm just going. So here's uh, Even, and this is awesome. He comes around, um, and I, I, I can't really get on his wheel. I'm just, I'm not doing so hot here. So this turn right here is actually where I blow it. Instead of whipping around Even, who hits his brakes, I should have whipped around him at 22, 23 miles an hour, and just hammered up into the peloton instead so he even hits his brakes i think he's might be a newer rider and instead of going around him and doing the right thing i hit my brakes too and now we're both off the back so that point in the race i think that turn more than anything 
was was really where I screwed up. I think I think I might have been okay if I hadn't blown it on that turn. And here I am again at, you know, 400 watts. Um, I'm you know this is not a good place for me. This is the point when I realized that, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm what am I 10 minutes into the race that I've I've really screwed up. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna dig in for a while and I'm I'm. I'm hoping that with the corners coming up, um, maybe the race will slow down a little bit. I mean, I even have this terrible thought in my head for a moment. I'm like, maybe I'll get lucky and there'll be a crash, which, you know, when you're hypoxic like I was at this point, you know, that sounds like a great thing. After the fact, I feel kind of guilty for even thinking that. But I'm just hoping and praying for a miracle to get me back in the race here. All right, so let's – so I'm going to kind of change gears here. So – you know, having watched this video once through already, um, you know, it, I, I don't catch back on with, with the main group. I mean, they're basically on these flats, they're gone. I mean, I don't know what, what the race speed was, but I'm going 26 miles an hour right now. And I mean, we're not getting any closer to, to the main body of the Peloton. So basically here, I'm like, all right, it's time to start getting a little bit smarter. So I see even he, you know, he comes around this corner and slows down again. Um, and you know, I, I don't make the same mistake I made before. I basically just go around him um, and maintain my, my momentum through the corner, which is good. It's something I've been working on. Um, you know, if anybody watching this is a beginner racer like me, you probably, you know, you probably have some of the same struggles I do. Um, you know, I don't corner well. Um, you know, I've, I've got a lot to learn there. Um, okay, so here is the first guy that we scoop up, which is great. So Evans on my wheel. He's the guy in green with the, the orange bike. He's behind me. Um, you know, I kind of, I kind of yell out to this guy, um, as we pass him, I'm like, Hey, jump on if you can. Um, and so now we have three and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. So my heart rate's down to low one seventies. You can see that my wattage is mid three hundreds. Um, you know, I've held three fifty um, for 10 minutes before, um, which is, I mean, was exhausting, which is basically kind of like a max that I can do. Um, but I know that I'm, I'm okay there. I'm like, I can take, you know, a minute or two minute long pull at 350. Um, and I have this idea in my head now, like I'm, you know, I'm catching up with people. We're scooping them up. I mean, it looks like we're coming past them really fast on the GoPro video, but um, all these guys are jumping on. I mean, so there's three guys behind me right now. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm feeling better about it. And, you know, what I'll probably do is let this video play for a little bit. Um, we can say, okay, so good. Now we're going to start, you know, taking turns. Um, you'll, you'll see in a little bit, unfortunately. So these two guys in blue, um, you know, I think they had blown up so hard when they fell out originally that right here, yeah, they're going to wave me through. Like they're not able to hold even's wheel, which is, which is too bad. I think they was just, I think they were just, they needed more recovery after they dropped out of the, the Peloton. Um, whereas an I've been, essentially recovering um you know like i said i'm 185 pounds so at, you know for me for my size like i can i can recover at 300 watts right i can hold 330 um you know and that's kind of where i've been for the last couple minutes so i'm kind of getting my you know i'm getting myself back a little bit here you know and even he's you know he's he's taking a good pull um he's sitting up there for a little while uh, but unfortunately we're back down to two and we're talking that's what we're talking about right now you know um, and then we're coming up on this, uh, on this guy who, uh, you know, these people that I'm passing, what I'm going to try to do is, um, add their, add who they are. I'm going to try to look them up on the race results and kind of add their names up. So hopefully you'll see them on the screen now. Um, so we grab him, he jumps into our group and he's a strong rider. Um, so he takes some really nice pulls later on. And, uh, and yeah, we basically just, just roll along here. I'm starting to feel good. You can see I'm, 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 you know, I, I don't know what my FTP is exact, exactly. Um, you know, it's, uh, Strava thinks it's 318. Um, my Garmin doesn't really know. It thinks 330, which I'm sure isn't right. Um, I'm in pretty good shape, but I'm certainly not, I'm certainly not going to be able to hold 330 Watts for an hour. Um, so I, I need to do a test, but I, but I know that I can, I know that I can take poles at between 300 and 400 Watts, um, and be comfortable and be safe that I'm not going to blow up. 
So basically kind of what I'm going to do here is, uh, you know, when I pull, try to sit at about three, 350, you know, maybe 400 if it's, te if it's dead flat. Um, and, and that'll be, that'll sustain me. I can ride, I can ride all 40 miles, um, you know, doing that if I'm able to, to take turns. Um, cause as soon as I jump on the wheel, you can see my wattage, um, drops way down. I mean, basically drops from like 350 down to like 250. Um, so for you other new racers, you can see what a difference it makes. I mean, I'm, we're going 23 miles an hour now and I'm doing, you know, 220 Watts, which, uh, you know, for somebody my size is, is pretty sustainable. I mean, that's, that's, it's pretty easy. Um, you know, if you're a small rider, 140, 150 pounds, um, you know, you have to scale down your wattage appropriately. Right. Uh, yeah, so we're kind of cruising along. We're just chatting a little bit. Um, you know, there's some camaraderie going. We, you know, we're all cat fives. I mean, maybe these guys are cat fours, but I'm assuming if they're out the back like I am, they're they're probably also cat fives. I mean, if, if we're out the back at this point, it's it's more inexperience than it is fitness. I think we just we let ourselves get dropped onto the descent. So here I am taking my pole. You know, I, I'm trying to ease into like 350, 370. You know, I, I'm probably a little bit stronger on the flats than than some of the other folks. Um, so, you know, I can I can bring the speed of the I can be bring the speed up a little bit. Um, you know, I figure for you know riding, you know, with no headwind, we're riding on the flats. If I can if I can get it sitting around 24 miles an hour, then you know we're, we're probably never going to catch the peloton, but we might be able to catch like. Um, you know the group that falls out that drops on the hills that's kind of like what i'm thinking i have in my this idea in my head that like the peloton is going to fall apart on the hills and that like if if this group is able to really push hard um on the flats that maybe we can get into a bigger group that's kind of what's in my head right now but uh but yeah here we are riding along i think we're going to scoop up a couple, a couple other folks um so even just took his pull um, he, you know, he rode really well. Um, you know, as you'll see, event. I, I unfortunately I don't get the entire race on tape. I only get the first hour before my GoPro battery died. I actually brought a battery extension pack, and uh, I didn't turn it on. I'd never used it before. I didn't realize I had to activate it. So instead of running for the whole race, it ran for an hour. So that's a bummer. But we get the first hour of the race. Um, so here I am up in front again, so I just kind of bring the speed up a little bit. I try to ease into it. Um, you know, I'm at a good wattage. My heart rate's low 170, so I'm doing okay. Um, and we're about to scoop up another couple guys who um, I think these guys probably did just get dropped on the corners. Um, if, you've, if you've never raced with a big peloton um, where there's corners involved, even though these are huge corners... Um, you'll find that generally as you come around the corners, um, the group will always always stretch out. If you're in the front, you're fine. If you're in the back, you're basically sprinting to get back on at every corner. Um, so this is something I learned from my first race. You know, races that have corners, you want to try to be up to the front or you're going to be sprinting every corner. Um, and so I'm assuming that's what happened to those guys because they end up taking good pulls. You know, they're, I mean, in my opinion, you know, everybody in this little group we have, have right now is we're pretty strong. Um, yeah, so in a little bit, you're going to see the follow car is actually going to come up and around us, which truly signifies that we have been dropped. Um, yeah, here they are. So in a road race, at least in Washington State, the rules that I'm aware of are that once that follow car passes you, you are... You're, you know, you're still in the race. I mean, you're still allowed to race and catch up, but you no longer really have like that race protection. You're now following the rules of the road. So when we come around on the major streets, um, traffic is not necessarily going to be stopped for us. So we're going to have to like ride on the right and, and be safe and all this stuff. Um, so here we go. We scoop up one more person. This is Jeff, who's also from my team. Um, and Jeff is also really strong and has a lot more cycling skill than I do. I mean, I've just ridden with him a couple times, but um, he's a good rider, but he and his wife are big snowboarders. So they got into snowboarding really big over the winter and weren't cycling. And so, <laughs> so unfortunately for Jeff, um, you know, his fitness is, just isn't there. Um, 
but you know, I'm I'm sure he'll be fine. You know, he's he's a good rider. But we scooped him up. Um, he jumps in the group, and I think now you'll see we're we're starting to kick it up a notch. Um, this part is actually really fun. So we've been dropped. We're out the back. I mean, the the follow car's gone. I mean, we are like, you know, we're just we're basically like out of the race at this point. But um, but this is fun. I mean, you you know, if you're a Cat Five racer. You know, you don't know a lot about racing. Uh, you're out here. You're just pushing hard, right? You're working hard. You're working together. I mean, now like our teams, you know, our little, well, I guess our little team, our little group here, has you know is feeling good. I mean, people are taking bigger pulls now. We're we're sitting at 24 miles an hour, 25, which is you know which is pretty good. I mean, we're on a flat, um, and people are working. Um, they're taking turns. Uh, we're just trying to fight back into it. And uh, I don't know. It's just it's fun. Yes. Anyways, you can see that now that I have all my Garmin data going, we are starting to approach the climbs. I mean, we don't know this. I don't have, you know, the maps or elevation or any of that stuff like, you know, on my Garmin at the, at the time. So I'm just, we're just kind of rolling along, uh, you know, kind of doing our best here. And I think we have seven in our group. And gosh, this guy up here on the right, I'm not even sure if we just caught him or if he's He's in with us, but now we've got like a pretty good rotation going. So you can you can see guys are kind of rolling off to the right. We're pushing along. I mean, we're not going super fast, but uh, a lot of us are kind of kind of trying to you know catch our breath and and get back into it. I'm I'm feeling pretty fresh. I'm sure even probably is, but a couple of these guys are a little fresher, or they they got dropped more recently, so they're still trying to recover a little bit. So. So we're coming up on a right turn here, and this is pretty cool. You can see that the uh, the race is organized such that they actually have people that stop traffic for us when we come around the turns. So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, so another corner where I did a terrible job. Um, I, I let this huge gap form. I hit my brakes. Then I had to hit all this wattage. All the guys behind me had to hit all this wattage to catch back up. It's... You know, watching it now, I can see like you know these 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 things that I, I just have to work on, right? So, um, you know, in the last week since this race, when I'm riding on my own, I've been really working on trying to uh, maintain my momentum around around the corners, and um, yeah, so lots lots of stuff to work on. But here, I'm I'm doing a decent job. I'm holding the wheel. My wattage is pretty low. I mean, we're not going very fast. You know, a bunch of us are tired, like I said. Um, you know, we'll see when I when I kind of jump back on the front that I'll I'll try to bring the speed back up a little bit. I was I was kind of hoping that these guys, once they start feeling better, will be able to uh, to kick up kick up the pace a little bit uh, to give us you know just give us a chance to get back on. So and again, this is Jeff. Uh, he's got this sweet steel Selma bike that he's uh, I've seen him ride before. Uh, I have a Selma too. They make absolutely fantastic, you know, all-rounder bikes. I have a Soma Double Cross, which I use to uh, bike down the coast with, and I think this is a Double Cross that he has as well, uh, with a totally kind of unique paint job that I hadn't seen before. But yeah, super awesome bike. Uh, the bike that I'm actually riding in this race, my race bike, is a 2017 Diamondback Podium Vitesse. Uh, it's a disc brake bike, which I'm all about the disc brakes. You know, I, I'm not an old school cyclist. I don't have, you know, any retro grouch in me about, you know, braking systems or any of that stuff. I, I have, uh, you know, uh, cantilever brakes. I have V brakes um, and I have disc brakes. And I love these disc brakes. I feel a lot better on when I'm descending. If the road's wet and there's, you know, water getting all over the bike, um, I feel safe. I think they're easy to maintain. Uh, these are hydraulic disc brakes on this bike. I have uh, mechanicals on other one of my other bikes. I've I had mechanicals on another bike before that, and I did all the maintenance myself. Um, and I love them. Um, so I love this bike. It's fantastic. It's my first like real, you know, like carbon fiber. It has Ultegra components. You know, it's 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 
fairly lightweight. I mean, it's my first bike of like of this type, you know, of like a race bike, and it is a blast. I, uh, you know, I just I feel like you know I just feel like invincible on this bike. Um, I feel super fast, super confident. You know, it's it's the bike's all blacked out. It's really cool. Um, not a lot of people have Diamondbacks road bikes. Um, they're not like that's not something they're really like known for. Um, so it's kind of unique. Um, you know, people ask me about it, like, you know, where did I get it? You know, all that kind of stuff. So it's, anyways, love the bike. I bought it online, uh, put it together myself, or parts of it together myself, and uh, I've been riding. I, I've probably put 3,000 miles on it um, in a year, in addition to the thousands of miles I put on my other bike. Um, okay, so, so things are going to start to get a little bit more interesting here. Um, you can see Jeff. I think Jeff is starting to hurt a little bit. Um, you know, he's okay right now, but you'll see that pretty soon his hips will start to kind of, kind of waggle back and forth and stuff. Um, cause once we get this hill, start hitting these hills, uh, you know, Jeff's a bigger guy even than me. I mean, uh, he's taller than I am, you know, he's just built a little bit bigger and, you know, I think these hills are going to, are, are going to just hurt him a lot more than I am. Um, adding to the fact that he's on a bike that's probably 10 pounds heavier than mine. But, uh, yeah, so we're cruising along. We're, we're coming into the base of the big hill. None of us even know how big the hill is, so we're just kind of cruising along, oblivious to what's about to happen. Um, fog is still thick. You know, we're out of the back of the race. Uh, we, we haven't caught up to anybody in a while or seen anybody in a while. So I think, I think the race itself... Oh, here I... I end up passing Jeff. Uh, the gap just gets a little too big, and um, as much as I love to ride with him, you know, I've, you know, I want to, I want to do my best to try to. I don't know. I still have this, this, this idea and this dream in my head that we're going to catch, we're going to catch the peloton. So I jump back up in with these guys, and and we roll along. This was really a beautiful place to ride. I, I mean, Alma, Washington is about an hour and a half away from Seattle. It's um, a little south and then out towards the coast. Uh, lots of, you know, it's, you're just kind of out in the country here. Um, and, you know, I grew up in a small town. I grew up in the country. Um, I, I love being out in areas like this. And it's, I mean, with the fog and the trees and the roads in good shape, it's just, it's just beautiful. I, you see my heart rate's dropping back down. It's in the 140s. I mean, at this point, like, you know, regardless of how the race is going, I know that I've, you know, screwed up and that I've, I've let myself get dropped, but I'm having fun. I mean, this is a lot of fun here. Uh, I start talking to these guys. Uh, you'll see uh, you know, up ahead a little bit. We start to come up a hill. Or we're starting to come up a hill now, yeah. So the grades, it doesn't look like it on on the video, but, I mean, the grade is like 6% right here. It's, you know, it's it's – it's a decent grade, and I'm I'm trying to talk to this guy in front of me. I'm I'm saying, hey, you know, go easy into it. You know, I know for myself that I on hills, uh, hills that are only a few minutes long. If I if I ride in the mid 300s, you know, I can get to the, the top of the hill and, and drop the hammer right away. And that's been my goal to always come over the top and accelerate. So I'm kind of telling him, I'm like, hey, go ahead and ease into this. You know, he he kind of gives me the signal to go ahead and come up. Um, which was like great time and it was right as we hit the descent. So, you know, I, I, I try not to hammer over the top because I don't want to drop any of the guys behind me. I want us to stay together. But, uh, but I know on the descent that I'll be pedaling and putting out wattage and everybody on my wheel will just be recovering, which is when you're working together, that's, I know that's what I want. There's no intention whatsoever, like for me to, to drop anybody in the group. I absolutely don't want to do that. I want everybody to stay as fresh as possible. I don't care. Like if we stick together the whole time and we come into the finish line and I'm the last person in this group, I, I don't care. Like that's, that's not what I'm into right now. I mean, we're probably, I think, I think the race had something like 50 or 55 guys signed up. You know, we're, there might be 10 guys behind us at best. I mean, the bulk of the race is in front of us, so it doesn't matter you know, between the seven of us, <laughs> really who finishes first. I mean, you know, my, my thought is I want to, I want to race hard. I want to work with these guys. I want to race hard. You know, I want to be proud of, of, 
of how everything went. And, uh, and so that's what I'm working towards. So you can see I'm coming up the hill here, 4% grade. It's, it's not too bad. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do a really good job of holding it 350 watts, which I think I actually did a pretty decent job here. Um, you know, as it levels out, I, I ease off the pedals a little bit. Um, I, I think I give somebody a signal here in a little bit to, uh, to go ahead and come around. Uh, not realizing that we're about to hit the big hill, as you can see the elevation gauge down the bottom right. Um, so yeah, so something interesting happens here. So the guy, I, I, I don't know his name. I probably will eventually, and I'll put it up on screen. But he kind of, um, I don't know that he attacks necessarily because he's not like looking back and he's not like he's really trying to escape. But I think he maybe got a little impatient and he kind of hit the gas a little bit, um, which caused me instinctively to also hit the gas. My goal was to stay, you know, in the mid 300 watts, and I had to hit, you know, 450 to catch up with him, but only for a short spurt. So I catch up with him really quick. It doesn't cost me too much energy, uh, but I'm talking to him. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, hey, I think we're gapping the guys behind us. You know, I'm kind of hoping that he's going to ease off a little bit. He doesn't. I look back. You know, I've been looking back, and you know, Evans behind me, and basically everybody else is gapped. They're all together, but they're way behind us, and so there's two guys with me, there's four guys back, you know, I'm like, I'm just, I'll stick with these guys, you know, I'll stick with this front group, you know, he, he signals me through, I come through, um, and I don't know what I'm doing here, I don't know why I'm hitting 450 watts, um, I think I was just, you know, kind of in a good mood, um, and then even comes through, and he, he does something even stranger to me, he, like, le legitimately, like, basically attacks or like goes goes on the move here um and i figure i thought maybe he's just rolling through so i put in some high wattage to get back on his wheel um because i wanted us to stay together you know we we have 30 more miles of race left and you know i wanted it to be something i, I don't want to do this alone i mean i don't want to be sitting in the wind for 30 miles um so i put in some wattage to catch up i get back on his wheel He's looking back, and he doesn't continue the attack. So I think that he's – so my thought is he's like, okay, you know, we're, we're in this together, um, and I kind of feel like he's waiting for me. All right, so we're, we're definitely into, I mean, the meat of the hill here. And, and you can see – so, I mean, I don't, I don't know how big even is. You know, I, I, t I chatted with him briefly after the race, and I mean, he's definitely like, he's a he's a climber. I mean, he's a, you know, he's a he's a bit, uh, you know, he's, he's a smaller guy, um, and you know, my heart rate's going up a little bit. I, you know, this is a this is a good pace for me. I mean, we're on a four percent. You know, I, I'm rolling around three hundred watts, which uh, you know isn't too hard for me, but uh, but I'm feeling it. I mean, you can see here, like he he takes these like little he takes these little punches, these punchy little uh, moves, and then I kind of punch a little bit, and he eases off, and I ease off, and you know I never really committed to like jumping on his wheel, and you know, and I don't even know like at this point if I try to to push the power to get back onto his wheel, you know, I'm probably going to be in the red, and I don't want to go there. Um, you know, at this point, I've realized I, I've. I have enough experience now with with riding and racing that I know that if I go into the red on a hill, like actually going to the red, like if I bring my heart rate up into like the low 180s, um, you know, if I sit at 400 watts for two minutes or something, uh, I'm not going to do well. Like I'm going to I'm going to be at below my my ability uh, for the rest of the hill. So I, I, I let him go. Um, and. And uh, you'll you'll see coming up. So we're coming up on the start finish line, and later in the day, which I didn't get on tape because my my battery died, um, the start finish line has the huge cooling tower kind of like hanging over top of it, which is which is really cool. But you don't get to see it um, at this point. But anyway, so we're coming up on the start finish. Uh, it's pretty tough grade. Uh, it says eight percent here, which uh, you know is is pretty reasonable. Uh, and having that at the finish line is <laughs> it's kind of brutal. Um, you know, I end up like a couple hours from now or an hour and a half from now 
coming to the finish line alone, um, which was probably good because if anybody like you know tried to sprint out at the end of the race, I would have been totally cooked. Um, you know, I just don't have the strength of the fitness to really do much on a nine percent grade. Um, and it, it, you know, it does it does flatten out a bit here, but I mean, after riding up a nine percent grade, you know, even this two percent, I mean. You can see my watts. I'm at like 220. Oh, you know, actually, I remember this. So I knew I was coming through the finish line for the first time. And so I eased up on my wattage to try to get some energy back so I could go hard through the start, through the start finish line. Um, you know, just a little bit of vanity there. So I remember doing this. I remember uh, easing off. And I was actually nervous. So this was my second race ever, my first time ever being dropped. And I was afraid that I was going to get pulled here. Um, I was really concerned that the, you know, that the race official was going to pull me off, but nobody's there. Nobody does. The guys on the sidelines are really cool. They're like, good job. Hang in there. One of the guys tells me two minutes, um, which I can only assume, you know, meant two minutes. So the main Peloton was two minutes ahead of me. So we're doing three, three laps total today. Um, and in one lap, um, I had gotten two minutes behind and I know that the, the, the next race that starts after us started five minutes after us, so I'm a little concerned. Um, I'm thinking to myself that essentially by the time I get, so if I can if I can basically maintain a similar pace to what I did for the first lap and only fall another two minutes behind, I'll be four minutes behind total by the end of the second lap and I won't get pulled from the race because the race behind me won't catch up. So that's my thought. I'm like, have to do pretty much about as well as I did on the on the first lap um, to not get pulled and be able to finish the race and do the third lap. That's kind of what my thought process is. But this is bad. I'm in I'm in I'm in trouble here, right? I'm alone. I'm I'm pushing wind. Um, I mean, you know, it's it's basically flat. I mean the grade says one percent or whatever, but it's basically flat. I mean yeah, the grade's zero percent here. Um, you know, I don't believe there's any winds, but uh, you know, I'm going like twenty miles an hour and that's 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 slow right um i mean i'm doing 350 watts there must have been a little bit of wind or something i don't know the wattage and speed right here is seems a little funny to me maybe just a little bit of grade that you see there um but i i need to find somebody right and i'm looking back and there's nobody behind me um i keep looking back i'm like if there's anybody behind me i'll ease up and 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 get in with them um, but there's nobody back there so Evens ahead of me, um, and 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 you'll see. So eventually, like after some time, it takes me a long time to catch up with him. But basically, he totally crushes me on the hill, and then I make up the gap on the flats, um, which makes sense, right? I'm the I'm the big guy. I can push, you know, I can push the wattage on the flats. Um, you know, I, Evens a little bit smaller guy. You know, he can crush the hills. Um, and so we end up working together a lot better for the last couple laps. Like he doesn't gap me. It's, it's unfortunate that none of this is going to be on tape, um, because my battery died, but he, he doesn't gap me on the Hills. The, the next time we come through, he basically just rides with me. Um, and then one other guy, we scooped up another guy, which you'll see at the very end of this video at like minute 55 or something. Um, and the three of us basically ride together and we, I mean, I don't know how they felt, but I had a blast riding with them. I, I did probably my best one hour power ever, um, riding with them. I mean, I was taking huge pulls, uh, you know, I'd kind of like really kind of re rejuvenated. I had eaten some food, you know, had some, some goo. And I mean, I was, I was taking, you know, pulls at like, you know, near 400 Watts, um, on the flats. I mean, which, which for me is, I mean, that's fantastic. You know, taking a one minute pull of 400 Watts. Like I'm, I'm really happy with that. That's God, I wish I'd gotten it on tape. Um, you know, and then they were coming through and taking their pulls and we were working together and so, yeah, I think just this first lap was a little weird, you know, even kind of leaving me behind me catching up him deciding we're going to work together. Um, yeah, but for right now it's, it's just me. Um, I'm alone. I don't know where anybody is. I don't know how far people are in front of me or behind me. I mean, there's a 50, it's a 55 person race. and I'm completely alone, which is, which is, it's kind of a sinking feeling. Um, 
So, you know, I don't know what my FTP is exactly, so I don't know exactly what wattage I should sit at. But uh, I think to myself that if I can sit at something like 320, um, you know, hit it a little bit harder on the hill. So, like, these, like, there's, like, these little rollers that we come through here. And uh, usually on rollers, I'll just kind of punch it. You know, I might punch 400 or 500 watts and, you know, roll down the other side and, and you know, I don't know. It might not be the most efficient, but it's, it's more fun than, you know, just putzing along the whole time. So I think here I am going to try to... Uh, I just got this video editing software. It's uh, Pinnacle Studio 22. I read a bunch of reviews. Really good reviews. Um, it was about 100 bucks. I'm going to see if I can get the fast forward um, feature to work.
Okay, so now we're at the point where I can see even the fog is clearing. I can see up the road a lot better, and I see that I am finally starting to close this gap down, uh, which feels great. Uh, I'm tired. Uh, I've been riding alone, pushing wind for a while. You know, even when you're so, as most of you who ride probably know, even if you're not pushing a lot of watts, just kind of sitting in the wind, riding alone is it's kind of tiring. I mean, it's just it's that consistent output of power, even if it's not high power, it kind of just can kind of wear you down a little bit. So I'm excited to see him, but I realized something that kind of puts me in a little bit of panic. There's another rider with him. So I'm concerned that the two of them together, I, I just won't be able to catch them. If they're working together, I'm not going to catch them. And then I'm, I'm really screwed. Um, I'm going to fall further behind. I'm going to get pulled. It's, it's all going to be bad news. So I feel really lucky and really happy that they decide to slow down and let me on. That's the only thing I can, that, that must have been what happened. Because you can see the speed now, Even's been cruising, he must have been cruising. If I was going like 22 miles an hour, you know, he was probably going like 21.8 or something, right? I mean, we were both, were, were, you know, pushing ourselves on the flats and now he's, he's softened up. We've scooped up another rider. It's the three of us now, and you know, like I've said a couple times now, complaining that I didn't get any more of the video, that I didn't get the second hour, but the three of us end up becoming this just like really solid team. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of riding easy right here a little bit. I think, you know, I don't know if Evan's trying to catch his own breath or he's trying to let me catch mine or what, but we, we're kind of rolling soft here, and then once we kick it up a little bit we just stay there um, and I'm hoping a little bit of that will be on the end of the video where basically everybody that takes poles we're, we're taking big poles they're a little bit short you know like like high wattage poles they're a little bit shorter we're rotating really well um, I see the guys I, I ask them if they're eating everybody's eating um, you know I'm having little shot blocks and you know the sun's come out the temperature's coming up I think the three of us are in a good mood we're chatting a little bit we're joking I keep joking with them that uh, I'm going to upload the video and say that we're the breakaway. <laughs> you know, because how would you know, right, if I don't tell you? I mean, it's just the three of us riding alone. Um, so we're, you know, we're kind of laughing about it, and we're having a good time. The people on you know, the side of the road that are, you know, they're, they're likely there you know, to watch their friends and family, but they all cheer for us. You know, it's just the cycling community, from what I can tell, is, is pretty great, really supportive, um, and we're just cruising. We're working together. Uh, you know, you're not going to get to see us go up the hills again, but you know, we, we, you know, we ease off a little bit on the hills. You know, we go up at like a really good tempo pace. I think for even it was probably a little bit boring because he's strong on the hills. But uh, you know, we came to the finish line together. Um, unfortunately, uh, the guy in the orange, really nice guy, he uh, he had a pretty bad cold last week. He was telling me about this, and he was trying to decide whether or not to race, and he decided to come to the race anyways. And, uh, you know, he ends up not being able to kind of to hang with us uh, at the end of the third lap. Um, and I think then at that point, at the end of the third lap even, um, which you won't, you won't see on video, you know, he decides that he's going to go, and I can't hold his wheel. And so, you know, all three of us end up rolling across the finish line alone, but... You know, for almost an hour, we ride, we ride together. You know, we, we ride pretty hard. And and that was the best part of the race for me. I mean, my so my normalized power from the entire race, uh, it was about two hours long. It was 39 miles or something. My normalized power was like 298, which is, uh, you know, for me, is like that's the highest normalized power I've ever had uh, on a ride of this duration. And I talked to one of my teammates later who had been in the peloton and his normalized power was like 207 or something so he was going so essentially he was going faster than me the whole race and but my <laughs> but my overall power was more um you know because i'd gotten dropped but anyways that's the end of the video um i hope you enjoyed it uh leave me any feedback you have uh, about my voiceover, you know, my editing, uh, you think, you know, tips and things. If you're, you know, a more experienced cyclist, 
and you're watching this, one of my teammates from the club or some, you know, any random person on YouTube, I mean, feel free to leave tips, any discussion you want, you know, if, yeah, I appreciate you watching. Uh, to all my friends and family that watch this, hopefully it wasn't too boring. Uh, this is my new hobby that I love. <laughs> I hope you can see at least a little bit of why I enjoy it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. All right, bye.